my traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. And it is that time. It's that time to get our party started, right? Trying to get uh, trying to get this uh, analysis going. Um, let's go over to the euro dollar and let's start off there as we always do. And let's see what the euro has given us. So um, a couple things with the euro. So you can see how we've stabilized around this 50% retracement. Now, obviously, we're in chop market city. I mean, this is, um, this is uh, everything that you're seeing here is actually pretty critical for today because uh, today, you know, obviously we've got, we've got CPI, we got the FOMC meeting minutes. Now, uh, like I was saying a little bit earlier, especially if you guys, I, I, I notice about a third of you have just tuned in over the last um, uh, maybe about 15 minutes or so, and you, maybe you missed my comments about CPI. Uh, the thing about CPI is um, we, even though crude oil has been relatively weak, I mean, you look at crude and it's, it's really just drifted lower over the last month. I mean, and you look at what crude has done over the last, um, you know, couple of days, all we're doing is consolidating down here. This is an hourly chart, but you can see what crude's done. It's just, it's been consistently dropping. And, um, and, and the thing about crude oil is that, prices at the pump really haven't gone down. You know, you'll notice that uh, uh, prices have been very stable. I know they have been in my region. They've actually been a little higher if you're in the Midwest. A lot of that has to do ref with refinery issues. So I don't think um, energy costs on a consumer level is really being too affected. But one thing that we've seen is, um, is you know, and I was just noting all the, just the massive amount of articles I've been reading uh, over the last couple of weeks on rents and rents are like record highs and that really feeds into uh, consumer prices then you got prices of like like you know for f you know food costs I mean eggs because of bird flu have gone up dramatically so prices of eggs have gone up or you know or you know are very high and you know, there's a lot of things on a consumer level that I don't necessarily think is going to be deflationary. I think it's going to be, uh, I think if anything, at risk of, of actually ticking higher. Now keep in mind that producer prices also ticked higher last month or, you know, two weeks ago or whatever, whenever we got the PPI, maybe it was last week. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but, um, if CPI comes in firm, uh, you know, 0.2% or better, uh, I mean, we're expecting 0.2% on the core read, I believe. Let me double check that before I go too crazy. Yeah, on core, both core and headline number, we're expecting 0.2%. If either one of those numbers come in a little hot, uh, you know, that could give a dollar, the dollar a bit of a boost. Now, 110 should be support. So anything that we see from CPI, we should be contained down here. I don't. Uh, unless CPI jumps at some ridiculous amount that like is is more of jaw dropping, which you know I'm not expecting. I'm, I'd be surprised if we I'd, I'd be surprised if we point uh, if we print above 0.2 percent, frankly. But it you know in the event that something crazy happens, uh, then you know uh, everything's off the table. But for right now, I actually believe that the 618 is going to go offer a lot of support at least between now and FOMC meeting minutes. Now. You know, we, you and I, um, if you listen in here uh, at the Lunch Money webinar about four hours from now, we're going to be reviewing the currency market just before the FOMC meeting minutes again. So I'll see you again before the meeting minutes today. But for now, we're going to deal with the CPI. So 110 should offer support. And, and I also believe that any rally back to 111 is going to be contained as well. Now, you might say, well, Blake, how about this previous support, the spike low here at 110.70? Do you think that'll offer resistance? I think that the market has the capability of taking stops um, in, in both directions. So that means that you know we could actually hit a new low here take stops to 110 or we can hit new highs take stops up to 111 i do believe that 110 to 111 will will captivate prices for today okay it, at least in you know until fomc meeting month so 110 should offer support uh, one and 110, by the way, is significant support. I, I need to put an asterisk there the reason why it is is because it is the 618 retracement of its recent rally Okay, so 110 should offer great support, uh, 109, you know, and change. But uh, you, you know me, I like to do approximations because technical analysis is not an exact science, nor is trading. So um, it'd be, my life would be a lot different if it was. <laughs> it would be a lot different if it was just very specific. But um, 
so we're in a range and 110 to 111. So around 110, you should see a lot of support. I think if we get a push up to 111 this morning, um, you know, people that want to be long the US dollar ahead of the FOMC meeting minutes because they're expecting a hawkish yeah, you know, FOMC, they're gonna they're gonna be selling the euro dollar at 111 today if we can get up there this morning. Okay, so th that's our range for the euro cable. Um, I I would be a little concerned about the cable. Uh, I and and I have I, right now I have pound short exposure um, through crosses short the pound New Zealand pound Aussie um, both of them are small. Um, they're just kind of in the middle of their range right now. Uh, the pound, um, uh, the euro pound, I'm long, you know, small position uh, higher, but just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of building that position because longer term, I think the euro pound is going to Gonna, gonna be staging a, a bit of a rally, uh, but the pound dollar. If I was long the pound dollar, which I'm not, I would be concerned. Uh, and the reason why is because we did fail above 157 yesterday, which was the 618. I told you if we did not close above the 618, that's going to be problematic. We didn't close above that 157 level, and even this morning, the rally to 157 was thwarted. That's concerning. If you're bullish the pound, you got to be looking at that going, hey, wait a second, this isn't good. You know what I mean? Um, because that, that to me, really, really emphasizes the importance of this resistance right now. Let me get, let me get this out of the way. That signifies the resistance of that 15720. And until we can break above that in the cable, and I know it's very frustrating. Believe me, I was trading it for the for two weeks on the short side, the a week and a half, maybe a little bit more than a week and a half. Um, and and I actually took a 45 pip loss, and I just said, forget about it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. So I know how frustrating the pay, the cable is right now, for longs and shorts. It's not you know not just a one way street here. It's if you're bullish, you're you you want to you want to throw your your computer out the window just as just as bad as anybody who's bearish. So um, I think I think the pound is kind of uh, going both ways at this point. But at th but at this stage in the game, uh, I, I think the key resistance that we have to deal with is 157.20 or one, whatever the spike high is 157.16. As long as we stay below that level, that is the risk is that you know, th as long as we stay below the, that level, the risk is that we do pull back. Now, pullbacks have been fairly limited, so I wouldn't be super bearish while we're above this 155.70 either, okay? So 155.70 to 157.20, that's kind of a range right now, and I wouldn't get married to the cable, no matter what you're doing. If you're getting long, don't get married to it. Don't risk a whole lot. I, and, and if I wanted to get long, I would get long down here today. You know, if you want to get short, try to get short above 157. You don't have to risk a whole lot up there. You can get short above 157, put in a tight stop, and you know, and hope for the best. I, I just think trading these ranges right now makes the most sense with the cable. It's going to probably give you the least amount of frustration uh, in the market. I would, I would think. Okay, so. 157.15, first of all, is resistance. 157.15, and and yesterday had the ability, had the ability of turning the the pound from range environment to bullish. But really, the the bulls could not put it together. They really, really couldn't. All right, support 155.70, approximately, and we're still in this very frustrating range. Okay. Um, let's go over to the Swissy. So the Swissy, um, I, I actually sent this chart out to our wise trade customers this morning. We are sitting on really critical support here. Okay. On the Swissy. If you want to get long the Swissy, this is the time to do it. However, I'm going to tell you from somebody who's long right now and I'm profitable, I'm not comfortable with it. Okay, um, the uh, the dollar Swiss is sitting on support. It, it's having a hard time rallying, 
and it's having a difficult time rallying even as the German courts pass the, the, the next bailout for Greece. I'm surprised that the euro hasn't rallied and the dollar Swiss hasn't rallied at the same time. All right, and you know maybe that has a little bit to do with some of the risk aversion that's uh, in the markets and the in the overall. equity markets, but uh, the one thing that I'm a little nervous about is we can't mount 98 cents and now 97 cents is coming into view. If we do break 97 cents today, uh, I am going to, uh, and we close below this level today, I'm probably going to take my dollar Swiss longs off the table. So I'm just, and, and, and I might even take all of my Swiss trades off the table. So just letting you know, this is a, this has been a real strong um, um, channel. Uh, I'm I'm a little nervous that we got a false breakout up there. I'm I'm nervous that we couldn't uh, break this very big trend line. Okay, so I'm thinking about um, taking my Swiss trades off the table today if we close below 97 cents. That's how important I feel that the support is today. Okay, 98 cents is going to be required in order for us to be bullish. So we're going to have to see some pretty strong dollar movements today out of the out of um, you know, out of the market to keep me engaged with this this trade. So I'm just letting you all know that. All right, so for today, support is 97 cents, and I think that's key support. Now, I know we've spiked below that. You know, we've been in, you know, 90, 96.75 down here. I, I get that, um, but that should hold. I'm, I'm just, I'm more worried about 97 cents and actually kind of where we're at right now. I'd like to see us close higher than where we're at today and give this daily candle, you know, which is red currently, you know, more of a hammer type of look. That's going to have to be required for me to stick around. All right. Now, 98 cents is going to be resistance today because that has been a near impossible uh, for us to get above. And we're bullish, but man, we we have the opportunity today in the Swissy to turn from bullish, which we've been for the last several weeks, back to range environment, okay? Which I don't want to see happen because I am long the dollar Swiss. All right. Um, let's see. Um, let's go over to the dollar yen. Okay, so here's the dollar yen, and I don't think anything's changed from our analysis yesterday. I think everything still remains the same. 124.70 is resistance. Which actually we could probably say it's 124.60, but <laughs> the 618's right here. And then 124 is still support. I, I, I really, uh, as I've told you, the last couple of days, I'm so uninspired by the yen pairs at the moment. So uninspired. Like, you know, everybody's like, I, I say everybody, I'm, I'm just saying anybody who's asked me about like the yen pairs is asking me, oh, you know, what about the Aussie yen? Is it a good short up here? You know, it's still below 92. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. I mean, it should drift lower, but, you know, it, all it's doing is just sitting there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not excited about getting into a trade that's just sitting there. You know what I mean? I mean, the Aussie end should be a good short from here, but it's not moving. You know, it's not moving up or it's not moving down either. You know, and, and so it just, I'm very uninspired with these yen pairs at the moment. That will change. Um, you, you guys uh, have, that have not, um, you guys that have uh, been with me for a long period of time, you know that yen pairs go on and off my radar all the time. When they're on my radar, they're squarely they're squarely on on the front burner, and uh, and I've become very focused on yen pairs. But like right now, I could care less what they're doing, really. And uh, and on top of that, we're dealing with these you know the summer doldrums too, mm. which isn't helping at all. Okay, let's go over to the dollar Canadian. So the Canadian, um, you know, everybody's got a different view of the Canadian, and everybody seems to have an opinion about the Canadian at the at at, at, at this point. I'm not too sure where everybody was at when when we were buying it at 124 uh, down here, 
but everybody seems to have an opinion on, on the Canadian nowadays. Listen, the, the Canadian's not gonna move anywhere without crude, in my opinion. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Fed won't influence or the FOMC min minutes won't influence the, uh, the dollar Canadian, but I think, I think the, 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 the power that crude has over the Canadian is, uh, is, 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 is something that can't be really matched at this point. And what you'll notice is crude is in a really tight trading range and the Canadian is starting to tighten in a really tight trading range. That dotted line that you see there, don't forget that is the monthly 2009 breakout point. We're sitting, we're literally sitting on it right now. It's at, it's at 130.65. The bid I see is 130.67 you know, right now. I mean, this is, we, we are consolidating at a big, big level, you know, so view it however you want to view it right now, but I see a really tight consolidation and which, you know, buying it at 130 makes sense. And, and matter of fact, if, if I drew that yesterday, but I'll have to redraw, I'll just drew, you know, it didn't quite make it to 130, it made it to 130 and a quarter, which you can see is, you know, spike low down here. So 130.15 now, it's good support. Resistance, if you want to be on the short side, 131.20. Frankly, if we get up to 131.20 after the CPI, if we get up there, I'll probably exit. I think I'm just going to take my dollar Canadian off the table, which I'll, you know, I'm, I'm up a few pips. I'll just, I'll take it until I have further direction coming out of this triangle. Now this is, you know, whether you see it as a triangle, a head and shoulder pattern, whatever you want to see it as, right now it's in a bullish trend. Okay. And this, correct me if I'm wrong, is a pennant. Right? Um, all it's doing is consolidating at the top of its range. And at, the, and at the highs. And so until it really starts to break through some of the support at like 129.50 or so, I don't know if I'd be bearish the dollar Canadian right now. Okay. Crude's just bouncing around on its lows. The dollar Canadian's just bouncing around near its highs. That's it. We don't have to overcomplicate things. Okay. So you know, before you get really bearish, I'd watch, you know, I'd watch this support really, but we'd have to break below 130 now. And man, you know, 130.15, actually, you know, 130.10, somewhere around there. I'm gonna write down 130.15. Resistance, 131.20. And we're, we are in a range, but we're very, it's it's in it's in a very bullish trend. Whoops. It's in a very bullish trend. Okay. And there's a lot of people fading the Canadian too. I mean, I, I've I've recognized I, I've I've seen a pretty large amount of traders fading this right now. And they may end up being right. I mean, especially if crude can stage a bounce, but now I, I go back to crude. I have to just go back and default back to crude. Look at crude right now and tell me crude's ready for a rip roaring bounce. I'm not convinced. I mean, maybe it will. I mean, and, and, it, and it very, very easily could. I mean, this is obviously some pretty key support down here and you know, maybe, va maybe value players, you know, decide to come in today. Maybe today's the day they just decide to start ramping this thing back up towards 45. And if it does, the Canadian's going to buckle. The dollar Canadian will come down real quick. But the longer we sit down here without a bounce, the more susceptible we are to a continuation. And that's the same thing with the Canadian. The, the, the longer we sit up at these levels without pulling back, the more susceptible we are to continue to squeeze higher into multi-year highs, which we're currently trading at. Okay, so there's the Canadian. Let's go over to the Kiwi. Kiwi, same story, um, you know, 
a lot of people, myself included, I, I'm, I'm not going to disinclude myself from this group. I'm looking at the Kiwi and I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, man, maybe this thing is really oversold. But I have to keep reminding myself that all we're doing is skating across the very lows. We are skating across, look at the big picture, guys. Drop, drop, right? Drop, just we're doing the same consolidation we did here, right here, before the resumption trend. The longer we stay down here at these levels without bouncing, the more susceptible we are to a plunge in prices. So, uh, you know, I, as much as I go, man, this Kiwi is damn, this damn thing's oversold, man. It's got to start bouncing. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking that too. Yeah, I'm I'm actually long the New Zealand dollar. <laughs> yeah, okay, not the New Zealand dollar, uh, not shorting dollars. I mean, but I'm long the New Zealand currency. But uh, it's it's heavy, you know. I, I you know can't, I can't I can't deny that it is really really trading heavy. Um, okay, so with that being said, I'm trying to get trying to delete the stuff that I drew yesterday. So I'm just trying to get rid of these lines. Let's get for that one. I can't. There we go. All right. So look at look at how we're just mid range. Oops. Sixty six fifty. Sixty five cents. There you go. Sixty six fifty. Sixty five cents. And until we break out to the upside, we're still in a bearish trend. Like I said, all we're doing is just skating across the lows. That's it. Nothing more. Just skating across the lows right now. All right. Aussie dollar, very similar situation. Can't take out 74 cents to the upside. Matter of fact, we were probing last night below 73 and a quarter. When I went to bed last night, we were, we were down below 73 and a quarter. We're down here, all right. Again, this is a this right here, and let me delete this. Uh, I'll keep that for a second. I have a shooting pain going through my pinky toe right now, and I'm not too sure why. Like, I've never, I don't think I've ever felt anything in my pinky toe except when I stub it. I had a shooting pain going through my pinky toe. Has that ever happened to you? Like, I'm just sitting here, and all of a sudden, my a shooting pain in my pinky toe, not in my, not in any other toes, just my pinky toe. The weirdest thing just happened just now. John says you're getting old, Blake. I guess yeah, north of forty, and weird, weird things happen. Okay, so, and I'm sure many of you can attest to that. You're like, oh yeah. <laughs> no, Rick, it wasn't a scorpion because it was. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm. I, it's not a scorpion. I, I'm. It was just a like a like a like a shooting muscle pain. Weird. <laughs> Kelly says, observe and see if it persists. See a doctor. Hey, my, my toe is the size of a golf ball. That's weird. No, I'm just kidding. Just joking. Did I ever tell you guys the story of my, um, oh, so, so I, I, I might have told you the story. Oh, it's already break time. I'll tell you the story really quick before we go on break. Um, I, uh, I went to, you know, I went to, to, uh, to, 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 um, Asked my wife to marry, uh, marry me. I was living in Dallas. Uh, I was a part owner of a brokerage firm, a technology company called Liquid Trader Technologies, and um, I wanted to bring my my girlfriend, who is my now my wife. I wanted to bring her to Dallas, and I knew the only way that I was going to get her to Dallas is to ask her to marry me. And I, you know, and I wanted to anyway. I wanted to propose, so you know, I asked her dad for permission, you know, and her brother. And um, so, you know, I got a ring, prepared everything for like this trip to San Diego, um, you know, hot air balloon, beach, you know, all sorts of stuff. Um, friends, you know, we had 
30 people at dinner at the sushi restaurant in La Jolla and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, so the literally the week before I, I, I go to ask my wife to, to marry me, um, I wake up in the morning and I think I have this big pimple on my, 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 uh, my eyebrow. I'm like, oh man, that really a great, a big pimple, you know, just, just before I go ask my wife to marry me. Great. And by the end of the day, by the end of the trading day, I, I actually, I would, you know, it was around, um, it was around noon, uh, lunchtime in, in Dallas. And this, uh, this, what I thought was a pimple, it swelled up to a golf saw, golf ball size thing on my, on my eyebrow. Like literally it, the edge of my eyebrow was like a golf ball. It, it was like half a golf ball. Imagine like half a golf ball looking thing on the side of my head. And I'm like, I need to go see the doctor. So I went to go see the doctor and apparently I got bit by a brown recluse spider that night. So I got, you know, I got treated for it. And when I went to ask to, my wife to marry me the next week in California, literally the, the poison from the brown recluse spider ate away a good inch and a half of my skin on the side of my face. And, and she still said, yes, imagine that. All right, guys, I'll see you back here in five minutes. Don't go anywhere. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You were listening to the, um, Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back. So uh, we're going to start off with the, we're going to go back to the Aussie and finish up here. And Scott says, man, that spider, thank God you weren't sleeping commando and bit your, your pee pee. <laughs> she would have said, she wouldn't have said yes then. <laughs> and uh, David said on your face, dude, total necrosis of the flesh heavy. Yeah. I, I mean, literally um, I was telling a story if you guys missed it about the, I, I got bit by a brown recluse spider on my eyebrow. So if you ever meet me, which many of you have, I have a, um, I have a, uh, uh, a um, scar. It's like a deep, you know, like chunk taken out of my eyebrow. Uh, it's not too deep now. I mean, it's been 15 years, but um and my left eye, I'm thinking about it right now, looking at it, it's, a, it's a, my left eye, and um, it bit me right at the edge of my um, my eyebrow, and it, it, now it just likes, it looks like a little like a little mini pothole, but it, it ate away a good, uh, yeah, it was about two inches by the time it was done, it was about two inches of my skin. Fortunately, it wasn't on my eyelid, because if it was on my eyelid, you know, I, I I probably would have had to get like reconstructive surgery or something. It was the craziest thing. It was when I was sleeping too. Had no idea. Anyway, okay, back to the Aussie. So here we go with the Aussie, and um, and and you know the Aussie very similar to the to the Kiwi. It, it's it it can't even make a higher high, and, and it looks heavy. I mean, it's trading heavy. So uh, as we have noted the last couple of days, while we're below seventy four cents. You know, we've got to be very wary being on the long side of the Aussie. As much as I think the, the the Aussie and the Kiwi, and even you know the Canadian to a certain extent is pretty oversold. I mean, you look at gold. Gold's, you know, back up towards eleven twenty. It, it it still can't surmount a bounce. And so, uh, you know, as long as we're as long as we're below seventy four cents, I think the risk is still to the downside. Now, if you take this last move of the spike low that didn't produce a breakout, we got a a, a false break down and it didn't produce a breakout to the upside. That's scary in itself. We touched the 50% retracement today. So 73.10 is support right now because that is the 50% retracement. 0.7310 and resistance is 74 cents. And as long as we're below 74 cents, it is bearish. You know, we have the opportunity to turn to neutral but you know the, the Aussie has failed to jump on that opportunity. So here's the dollar index. Okay, let's go over to the daily chart. Dollar index is very much range bound. Um, I'm going to write down the same levels as I did earlier this week: uh, 96.25, uh, 98.25. Okay, so 96.25. Oops, 25 and 98. 98.25 and we are in a range and let's take a real quick look at the peso and uh, the Nordic currencies too and then I'm going to answer your question so here's the peso 
I haven't even looked at it today and gosh, we're right up against our highs here. Now this, this looks bullish. I, you know, sorry if you're short the peso right now, that looks opposite of bullish or bearish. <laughs> it looks bullish. Okay. This looks very wedgy and it looks like it even, even any dip here looks Okay, and I don't trade the peso. I just do it for your, you know, for your enjoyment. So I'm going to write down support as being 1630. 1630 looks like it's 1631. Hold on, low 1633. Okay, so 1633, 1650 looks bullish to me for now. Now it's it's going to be a great setup as a short for those of you can they can trade it if if the dollar gets hit today if the dollar gets hit today sixteen thirty three that's going to be key support and sixteen point five zero 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 that's key resistance probably to put one too many zeros in there but that's okay let's go uh, there we go and it is bullish. Let's go over to the Norwegian Krona, which we're really in a tight range here. <laughs> we're trying to, I mean, here, you, 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 you want to tell me that, you want to tell me right now that, that crude's about ready to go up? The Norwegian Krona says, no, it's not. I mean, look at this thing. This thing is just, you know, um, just on the verge. Hold on one second. Stand by. Sorry. Okay. So um, we're on the verge of, uh, of possibly breaking out here um, with the US dollar and Norwegian Krona. Uh, 832.50. And this would be support now is right here. I made that. It's over here. It's really key support right through here. Uh, we'll call it 818. I mean, this thing looks on the verge of breaking out. If crude takes a dip or if the dollar rips today, it, it also will be an epic short if, if the dollar gets hit. You know, it's the same thing with the peso. I mean, you know, it could go either way. I mean, the breakout doesn't have to be bullish, but it does look bullish for now. Until, until proven otherwise, I mean, you know, it's bullish, right? That's wedgy. Now, again, either this or this, but we are at the apex, so today might might be the catalyst that drives us out of here. Okay. Um, let's go over to the Swedish Krona. Now the Swedish Krona, it's a little different story here. The Swedish Krona, remember the inflation data last week was really weak or uh, excuse me, it was really strong for, for Sweden. So that, that's what pushed us down. So, you know, if this, uh, I'm not going to write anything down here because, um, you know, uh, I, I don't think that there's any critical levels that we're pushing at the moment, but if the dollar goes down today and you guys can trade the U S dollar Swedish corona, this is probably not a bad short. Okay. Cause, cause it looks like it could be developing a bearish flag. Okay. With that being said, here is your bias chart and let's go into questions. Um, go into the way back.